Good morning, good morning. How are we doing this morning, Anchor Church? If you're joining us online, welcome. We're glad you're with us. Jump into a chat room. Our team's there to connect with you. Let us know where you're joining us from. We would love to connect with you. If you're new to Anchor Church, welcome. And uh, I don't know why this is, y'all. I, I woke up this morning with laryngitis. It's the weirdest thing ever. I was great all week. I feel good. It's only Sundays. Why does it happen on Sundays? But the devil is a liar. He ain't winning today. So all that means is I just need your help. So like if I say a joke that's not that funny, laugh like it is. Like you can clap and sit. Yeah, thank you. That's good. Thank you. Already starting. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I need you to help me, man. It's been a couple good services this morning, but y'all, come on, 1145, you came in ready. You came in. Hey, before I jump into week three of uh, uh, Under Construction, I want to remind you that Sunday, July 30th, we've never done this as a church before. We're coming up on four years as a church. How cool is that? Four years. And our church is growing so fast. It's incredible. And we've had a huge summer. Typically in the summertime, you see a decline in church attendance. Ours has actually grown. And uh, it's cool. We're seeing a huge move of God in our church. So we're doing a block party on Sunday, July 30th. We're having a party all day long. You're like, you mean I don't get to go home and have a break? Oh, no, you get to for a couple hours. Take a nap to come back, get your worship on. But we're going to have free breakfast that morning. We have merch that morning, baptisms that day. We're going to come back that night for a big worship night. Then we're going to have a huge barbecue, lots of surprises. You don't want to miss it. But we're going to give you invitations to invite your friends. Here's why. As a church, uh, we've broken 1,000 a couple times. I think at Easter this past year, we had about 1,200 people, and, but, but never on a consistent basis. And what I'm praying for is as a church, and I want you to pray with me for this faith goal, that we would see 1,000 people on the, and I don't, I don't want to just say 1,000 people. I don't want people to come and go. I want anchored people. I want, I'm praying that we're gonna have 1,000 people that day and we'll continue to have, like they will never leave. They'll come in and go, man, I found my home there. I found the light life there. I found Jesus there. And I'm praying for that. I want to believe in that so we can celebrate that. And we've never had 20 baptisms on one day. We've had like several. We have baptisms all the time, but never in one day have we had 20. I'm praying for 20 baptisms that day. Lots of goals for us as a church, but it's going to be a huge day for us to celebrate, invite your friends. I believe we're going to capitalize on some momentum that God is doing in our church. We're going to see revival. I think we already are. And I want us to be a part of that together. So make sure you get invitation to invite your friend. But we are week three in a series I titled Under Construction. The whole reason for this series is this. You and I want God to do a work in our life. Come on, somebody. You, you want God. I mean, that's why you're here. That's why you're here at, at noon on Sunday going, God, do a work in me. Do a work in me. I need help in my heart. I need help with my mouth. I need help with my attitude. I need you to do a work in my life. So God, I'm under construction for your work. But how many of y'all know sometimes construction is painful? If you've ever built a house, you know. If you've built a business, you know. When Teresa and I first got married, we built a house. There's nothing better for a marriage than building a house. <laughs> nothing, nothing stronger for a relationship than, than, than building a house. And so we, we, we're building this house. And I don't know if you've ever built a house, but it feels like there's a season where nothing happens. Like they're building the house and you, we would go every night after work and we go night after night and it looks like nothing happened. There's electrical, there's the framework done and you're just like, what did you guys do today? And they're like, we'll show you. I'm like, come on, man. You, and then you get all mad and you get frustrated and then you go back the next day and like all this work gets done. And you're like, what happened? Y'all magicians, like what? Like what happened? Like the day before, nothing. And then today, every, drywalls up, it's mud, it tape, and then the rooms don't look like they're gonna, they're like they're gonna be small, like a room for like children, like that's the master bedroom. They're like, wait till we paint it, it looks bigger. What, you liar. And then they paint it and you're like, what, it came alive. Why does that, because construction's hard, construction's difficult, and you can't always see the work, but then one day, things just start to click. And I tell you that because when you say yes to Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit is working in your life. And he is not bankrupt on resources. The Holy Spirit has resources to work in you and through you. And so it may not look like he's doing anything, but do not get frustrated and do not get depressed and do not get burdened. He is doing a work in you. So what you and I are saying to this series is God, do that work in me. Because Philippians, our theme verse says this, that God who began the good work within you will continue his work until it's finally Finished. Somebody say finally finished. 
That means he's where it doesn't look like it's completed and it won't be completed until he comes back or until you die. You mean he's always working in me? Yes, he is. Why? Because you need the work in you. We need him to work in us. And so it's finally finished on the day when Christ Jesus returns. That's kind of our theme verse for this whole series. Now, I changed the series up a little bit. If you were here week one, I, I talked about you and I need to have a heart for Jesus, a heart for others, that it needs to be under construction as we allow God to do a work in us. Last week, I talked about how our mouth needs to be under construction. Anyone get challenged by that this past week? You didn't think you had a problem with your mouth? Then I preached last week. You're like, oh, Lord, you got me, Pastor. And I had this whole series planned out. And then a couple weeks ago, I was thinking one area that we never really talk about as a church that is really, really important to us as a church and very important to you, vital to you as a follower of Jesus Christ, is your friendships. And I'm not talking about just like acquaintances. I'm talking about deep level, committed friendships, relationships that develop you and grow you into the person that Jesus wants you to be. We need to have friendships that last a lifetime. Friendships that speak into us, encourage us, enhance us. And let me tell you right now, we need those. Many of us have acquaintances in our life. And what happens is I believe we live in a lonely, isolated culture. Very lonely, very, you know why? Because everything can be done online now. You could do school online. You could do work online. Y'all, you could do church online. You could do church, you could click on, I, I remember when we started our church, I said, we will never we will never have video teaching. We'll always be live teaching. If we ever start a campus, it'll always be live. Why? Because you can always get video anytime you want at the click of a button. This is what, if you're joining us online and you live five minutes or 20 minutes away, get here. Like the experience that happens here is totally different than the experience that I'm telling you right now. I'm telling you, it's just different. It's different. Why? Because what happens is I truly believe the devil has created in us as a culture, isolation. You know what? I believe isolation is the bridge to loneliness. And when you're lonely, you will jump into a friendship or relationship that's just there because you're lonely. And so you won't be choosy, you'll just be open. I talk all the time, this happens all the time to guys and girls when they start dating. You know, they come to me and like, I don't know what happened, pastor. I just, you know what happens? You got lonely. And so because you thought, I'll never have nobody, guess what, you jump for somebody. And now all of a sudden you're like, what happened? Well, you should have been a little more choosy and thought a little bit more before you jumped in. But what happened is you were isolated and you were lonely. And because of that, you didn't have a quality friendship. Now, here's what all of us want. All of us want quality friendships. Come on, by a show of hands. Anyone want a quality friendship? Do you know how you have a quality friendship? You be a quality friend. The best way for you to have a good quality friendship is for you and I to be a quality friend. So here's what I did. For this message, I put together five Bs, five Bs of a solid friendship, a deep friendship. Now, I'm gonna read these, and as we process through this, you know what you're all gonna say? You're all gonna say, I want that out of a friend. I'm telling you these Bs so that you'll be that as a friend. You will be that as a friend. You just don't want that. You need to give that. Why? Because we need to be under construction in our relationships so that we just don't give in to anybody, but that we're open to make sure that we have the right people. Look what it says in Proverbs 27, 17. As iron sharpens iron, so a friend sharpens another friend. You know what that means? Look at that verse. As iron sharpens iron. You know what iron sharpens iron? There's friction, there's heat, there's struggle, there's pain. So in your friendships, it's not always going to be easy. It's the friction that makes it faithful. It, it's the pain and the pressure that makes it powerful. That's what you're gonna have in your friendships. And we're gonna have that sometimes. But if they're committed friends, then guess what? I'm gonna stick with it. Look what it says here. Proverbs 13, 20. Walk with the wise and become wise. Associate with fools and look, get in trouble. Get in trouble. Man, I'm telling you right now, you want to be around wise people? You'll be wise. You want to be a loser? Get around losers. That's just, it just happens. You, it just happens that we gravitate to those people. And what the Bible talks about is strong, healthy, deep friendships. Because God knew how important and vital it was to our lives. Matter of fact, if you look in First and Second Samuel in the Old Testament, there's two guys, David and Jonathan. Two of the bestest friends on the planet. You know, David was the second king of Israel. David is the guy that like beat the giant Goliath with like a slingshot and a stone. You know that story? 
and his best friend's name is Jonathan. Jonathan's dad's name is Saul. He was the first king of Israel. And you know what? Saul hated David. You know why Saul hated David? Because he was jealous of David. But you know what Jonathan saw? Jonathan saw the anointing of God, the hand of God on David's life. He goes, I wanna get around that. Listen, you know someone that's anointed, you better get around that person. I want that anointing coming off on me, man. I want that anointing, like, I wanna get around that person. So when it just like, I'm like, hey, I don't got all of it, just get some on me though. Leave a splash of anointing on me. And Jonathan knew that. And you know, when Jonathan died, David spoke at his funeral. And you know what he said? Our relationship was deeper than any sexual relationship I ever had with a woman. You know what he's saying? The relationship that we have was deeper than anything physical. It was enhancing. It was powerful. It was encouraging. It developed me. It made me the man I am. So the process here is don't get so caught up in the physical side of things. Get caught up in the spiritual depth side of things. That's what it's all about. So let's jump into these, these five B's here for a solid friendship. Here's the first one. Are you ready? You got to be wise in the friends you choose. Be wise in the friends you choose. Look what Proverbs 24, 1 says. Don't envy evil people or desire their company. Yeah. Rhetorical question, answer in your own mind. Think about the friends you have. Where did you find those friends? <laughs> just, just, just think. <laughs> you know what's up. Some of you are like, oh, I got my friends, man. Where'd you find them? Oh, maybe we go partying every Friday night. Do you know what? If you want deep friends that are gonna grow you spiritually, guess where you find those deep friendships that grow you spiritually? Yeah. If I wanna find people to play golf, guess where I'm going? To the golf. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> the Jesus answer. <laughs> if, if you wanna find someone to play golf, I'm, I'm going to a golf course. If I wanna find people to work out, I'm going to the gym. I'm not going to McDonald's. I'm going to a vitamin store. I'm going like, you know, so many people, what happens? They wonder how they have the friends they have that drag them down. I'm like, where'd you find them? Oh, we go clubbing on Friday nights. That's your problem. Like, you can't expect to find deep friends. Sean, so you tell them everyone at the club on a Friday night's not a Christian. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying you get around the people you want to be like. So get around the people that have the same values as you have and let them encourage you in the values that you want and the values that you desire. Get around the right people. Go to the right places. You should be in a crew. You should be serving here at Anchor. You should be here every single Sunday getting around people that want the best for your life. So stop hanging out with losers. Or you're going to become a loser. Like, give me an example. Okay, so, so I, I am, I am um, I'm a little bit of a freak when it comes to my teeth. Like, I like, I, I mean, I have braces in college. I still wear my retainers to this day. 50 years old, still wear my retainers. I, I, uh, Got electric toothbrush. Now, I'm, I'm kind of a freak when it comes to mouthwash. I use expensive mouthwash, right? You're like, how expensive? Like eight bucks. That's expensive for mouthwash, though. I use the whitening kind. We go, Sean, what do you do your teeth? I use whitener, man. I, I like that whitening tooth. So we went on vacation this past week. Guess what I forgot? Mouthwash. Now, let me tell you something. For a person with OCD, you can't forget mouthwash. So Austin and I went and worked out the first morning. We're walking back to the house and there's a Dollar General. I'm going, I'm going in there and get me some mouthwash. So y'all, I went into Dollar General. I got a $1 thing of mouthwash. It was called Commander Tartar. Now, listen. <laughs> y'all, that junk was green water, y'all. I know what happened to my voice now. <laughs> Commander Tartar killed it. Joker destroyed my vocal cords. I tried that stuff every day. I'm like, oh my gosh. This is green water. This is, this is burning my esophagus. This is, I'm dying. So we got ready to leave. Teresa goes, you wanna, you wanna take that thing? I said, no, throw that thing out. That thing is, but here's the thing. You're like, well, Sean, what's that doing thing? How in the world would I expect to find expensive mouthwash at the dollar store? How would I ever expect to get $8 mouthwash at a $1 store? So my point is this. How you expect to find Holland Dollar friends at a $1 bar? I'm just saying. I, I found me some good Christian friends. 
Oh, yeah, we club. No, you're not. You can't, you can't get disappointed when you find $1 friends at a $1 environment. You want a $100 boyfriend, $100? You want to have the rich, healthy, successful experience in Christ? Find those people in the right establishment, in the right environment. That's what it's all about. Look what it says in Proverbs. Proverbs says this, uh, 20, 27, 19. As a face is reflected in water, so the heart reflects the real. And you want to know who the person you're hanging with? Listen to how they talk to their boss, their spouse, their kids, their coworkers. Listen to how they talk about their friends behind their back. You want to know the kind of person? Listen, and let me say something. Quantity is not quality. Some of you are like, I have 100 friends. That's awesome. <laughs> how many of those friends are quality? How many of those friends? You know, I probably have six people in my life that have my heart. That's it. You mean, Sean, you're fake? Nope. There's only six people that have access. I'm guaranteeing right now only six people that I, I, I know can have access to me. You know why? Because my heart's delicate. I've given it away too fast, too quick, and got it stomped on it. So because of that, you're a little more trusting and a little more choosy on who you hand your heart to. Yeah. Like my, my grandson, Levi, that dude is precious. I don't pick him up and swing around like this. I don't do that. Why? You know why? Because he's precious. So I'm careful with him. And your friend gives you their heart. You better be careful with that heart. You better take some stock in that heart. You got to be choosy in who you give it to because not every single person is your best friend. When my daughter Alyssa was a little kid, she was five years old. Every single person she met was their best friend. We'd be in the grocery store. Someone was nicer. She goes, you're my best friend. You're coming to my birthday party. I'm like, Alyssa, it's January. Your birthday's in April. I know, but they're coming. I'm like, no, they're not coming. We don't know them, but they're my best friend. So we had to give her the lesson, like not every single person is your best friend. Like you have friends and then you have deep friendships. I know, but everyone, no, not everyone. You'll see, you'll see, right? But you do become like the people you hang out with. I'm telling you right now, if you wonder why you have an attitude problem or if you have a, a, a bad mouth problem, you have a foul mouth, if you wonder why that's happening, you're probably hanging around people that have that problem. My son, Austin, when he was in middle school, he hung out with a guy that was sarcastic to his parents. I heard how he talked to his parents. He was so sarcastic. So Austin would come home. He'd be sarcastic to us. And in the Blakeney house, that don't work. We didn't believe in timeout. We believed in getting knocked out. That's how we dealt with it. You're like, how'd your kid do that so good? Because I spanked that kid. I'm telling you right now. Like, you won't spank you. Oh, yeah, I do. Oh, yes, I do. I'm telling you, man. People wonder what happens. So I, I tell Austin, he come home. I said, you've been hanging out with a kid. He goes, no, I'm like, yeah, pop, yes, you have. <laughs> Don't tell me. I know you have. How do you know? I'm like, pop, right there. I know why? Because you become like the people you hang out with. So if you don't like who you're becoming, ask yourself who you hanging with. Who are you with? Look what it says here. Proverbs 24:1. Don't envy evil people or desire their company. Why? You want evil people around you? You're gonna become an evil person. Now. Yo, I'm going to give you some freebies in the sermon today, okay? Freebies. Just freebies. Are you ready? This is the first freebie. Are you ready? Be wise in who you hang out with, but don't let the people you hang out with pull you away from the Jesus that you love. Okay? What, what do I mean by that? Okay. I've been in ministry long enough. You know, I'll use anchor. I've been an anchor long enough to see people that love anchor, that get fed by anchor that feel the Holy Spirit at anchor, that love the worship at anchor, that love the teaching of anchor, that love the people of anchor, that have a friend who gets mad at anchor. Maybe I didn't hug them. I looked at them the wrong way. It might've been, I just had Mexican the night before. You know what I'm saying? Like, but I looked at them the wrong way. And so they got mad and left, but they just can't leave and leave. They gotta leave and take 16 people with them. So you gotta be wise in going, if this is my house, and this feeds me, and these are my community, then I'm not gonna let that person who feels offended drive me away from the place I'm connected. You gotta be smart, be wise, be wise, be wise. Because sometimes people's offense will manipulate you to walk away from something that you love. So just be wise. And Hank, the best church. Anyway, so. <laughs> that was another freebie, that was a freebie. All right, so be wise. Number two, be committed. Be committed. Be committed to your friendships. 
You want a quality friendship? Be committed to it. Look at Proverbs 17, 17. A friend is always loyal and a brother is born to help in a time of need. Do you know what? You and I want commitment from our friends, but guess what? You don't wanna be committed to your friends. You and I are committed, guess what? Until we're not committed. Like you're committed in the friendship till the friendship gets weird. You're committed in the friendship until it doesn't feel right. You know, when we started Anchor Church, we started with 20 people. And those early years were hard. And so we had people go, oh man, we're all in, we're committed. And guess what? They were committed until it got tough. Because y'all listen, it wasn't always like this. We set up every single Sunday. We set up every, I remember it, well, Stephanie was like cleaning out cockroaches from places and we were meeting at, down at the uh, drug rehab facility in Delray and like we had to set up pipe and drape every single Sunday, set up sound system every single Sunday, find band players every single Sunday, set up chairs every, so this is like hours of work before service even started and guess what? All the people that were committed to Anchor were committed to the idea of Anchor, weren't committed to the hard work of Anchor. And so all the people that were like, no, we're all in, they weren't all in. Do you know why? Because it got hard. And in your relationships, in your deep friendships, sometimes things are going to get hard. Because let's be honest, y'all, we are weird. Like, if you're my friend, I'm weird. Like, let's just understand, like, we're weird people. So you just got to be committed to the weird and love them anyway. It's just going to happen. You gotta be committed to it because you can't walk out on it. You know, like my son, Austin, he's been working out with me. And 4th of July, him and Marissa and Levi went down to Deerfield. And I knew he, I knew he wasn't gonna work out that day. I, I texted him, I said, you gonna work out? He goes, yeah. They got home at like 1.30, I'm like, Joker ain't working out. So I go to the gym, guess who wasn't there? Austin. So I disowned him. <laughs> took away his last name. Yeah, you're like, Sean, you, come on. He just, he didn't show, I know, but some of you have done the less, you've given up friendship for less than that. Some of us given up friendship and you don't even remember why you gave up friendship. Because you weren't, you weren't committed to it, that's why. Because it, did, it didn't meet your needs. But sometimes it just happens like that, like they're not gonna meet your needs, but it's okay because you're a committed friend. You're a committed friend. Look what Proverbs 18, 24 says. There are friends who destroy each other. Look, there are friends who destroy each other, but a real friend sticks closer than a brother. Man, y'all have read this passage so many times, and it just hit me this week. Look at this. There are friends who destroy each other, but a real friend sticks closer than a brother. You know what brother is? A brother's blood. Like my sister, Shannon, I, I could talk about her. She's my sister. We go to blows. You talk about her, we're going to blows. Because family, family's family. Family's blood. Right where Proverbs says, listen, you better have those close friends around you, you're going to blows for. Yep. Like, I'm not gonna talk about you because I'm committed to you. Can I tell you right now? One of the best ways to be committed to your friends is to be a communicator to your friends. Listen, I have a double major in preaching and counseling, which means I am an over communicator and Teresa loves it. It's her favorite thing about me. She <laughs> loves the fact, she loves it. You know why? Because she's a communicator herself. And so she loves it. So if you're a friend of mine, I am an over I am an over communicator. Now I will say this: if you're not a communicator, it's okay. But you have to have some level of communication to be committed to a friend. I know enough about relationships that if you're not a communicator, it's going to be really hard to have a relationship and stay committed to it if you don't know how to communicate in it. So does that mean you got to be open to every single person? No, but it does mean you got to learn how to have a level of commitment and communication and friendship in those friendships that you say are so important and valid. So first thing, be wise. Second, be committed. Here's the third, are you ready? Be selfless. Be selfless in your friendships. You know why this is hard for us? Because we don't wanna be selfish people. I don't wanna offer to you, I just wanna take from you. Why, because you're a jerk, Sean? No, because that's just our nature. Do you know one of the, I think one of the key ways that we are selfish in our friendships because we want our friends to be just like us. I, I honestly feel like that's one of the ways we're most selfish. And at the end of the day, I can't expect you to be me. You know why? Because you're not me. And we get mad at our friends when they're not like, do like, you imagine how boring the world will be if it's just a bunch of Sean Blakeney's? We'd all be smiling with $8 mouthwash. 
like all the short pants would be purchased up, all the, like everybody have tight shirts. Like it would be the most boring planet if it was all just me. But the reason why it's good that it's just not me is because the friends around me that are different than me make me better me. So don't get mad that they're not you. Embrace the fact that they're not you and allow that to change you and make you better. Look what Philippians 2.3 says. Don't be selfish. Don't try to impress others. Be humble. Think you give others as better than yourselves. Don't look out for only your own interests, but take an interest in others too. What that means is if you are a friend of them, care about them. Anybody ever had a friend that asked you how you're doing and never waits for a response? They just asked you how you're doing so that they can tell you how they're doing. <laughs> oh, if you ask me, then wait for a response. You know, I got a friend of mine who's a pastor. I've been a friend with him for a long time. You know what? I don't think he knows I'm a pastor. <laughs> like, he'll, hey, how's everything going at Anchor? And before I can say, here's what's going, he's just like, here's what's happening at our church. I'm like, bro. <laughs> he texted me last week, two weeks ago. He's like, hey, I wanna talk to you. He's where he says, but I can only talk on Monday between 10 and 11. Oh, you're, you're important. It's like, I, I have, I'll make sure and clear my schedule, boss. You know, I'm just like, <laughs> man, if you, if you got a friendship like that, ask yourself, is it worth the investment? I want people to understand I got stuff going on in my life too. I got, I got stuff like, I wanna understand you, but I want you to understand me. We have to be open to that and understand that. But... We have to understand, we have to understand that if you're going to give in other relationships and you want them to give to you, you have to be given to them. Fourth thing, you ready? Be truthful. Be truthful with your friends. Be honest in your friendships. Do you know what you want, but you don't want to admit you want? You need honesty in your friendships. Everybody wants honesty. You don't admit you want honesty, but guess what? You need honesty because honesty makes you better. Anybody ever had a long conversation with somebody? And after the long conversation, you walk in the bathroom and you got a booger and they never told you? <laughs> Anybody ever get mad? I'm just like, man, I talked to you for 10 minutes, bro. Just give me the, give me the sign. Be like, tell me. I want to be friends with people that tell me when I spiritually got a booger. I want, you know, I want people to stab me in the face, not in the back. Like, just tell me. Like, tell me what's up. Yeah, I get it. It's not going to be good, but I want to have somebody tell me. Look what it says in Proverbs 27, 5. An open rebuke is better than hidden love. Yeah. Words from a sincere friend are better than many kisses from an enemy. Now, listen, y'all, I say this, but I'm telling you this. This is not with everybody. Those six people that I told you have access to my heart, those are the people I'm open to hearing from. Do you know why? Because it takes time and it takes trust. Yeah. It takes time and I had a guy come to church for about three weeks here. Came for three weeks. After three weeks, came to me and said, hey, I wanna be your accountability partner. I said, no. He left the church. I'm just gonna say it like I wanna say it. If you gotta ask me to be my accountability partner, you ain't gonna be my accountability partner. That's something you get asked of. You know why? Because it takes time and it takes trust. And not every single person around me has access to what's in me. The, those, those people that have my heart that I trust, those are the people that I trust to tell me what I, you know why? Because I know they love me enough to tell me what I don't wanna hear, yeah. but need to hear. It's, it's the time, it's the trust, it builds that connection inside of you. And that every single person gets that access. But let me tell you this, some of you are going, but Sean, I don't, I don't need that honesty because I just, I didn't really have a whole lot going on. That's called a blind spot. Here's what people say, people say, I don't have blind spots. That's why it's called a, a blind spot. But I will say this, be honest in private, be encouraging in public. You don't wanna be in a group of friends and be like, hey, just wanna let you know, you stink as a friend. Oh, great, God bless you. You wanna be in, in private when they're honest with you. They're encouraging you in public but they're honest to you in private. And when you're honest with your friend, just don't like call them out, be specific. Like, hey man, I, I noticed that there's some things that push your buttons. I wanna talk about that. 
Now, I noticed that you, um, you get angry a lot. I don't want to talk to you about that. I noticed the way you talked to your spouse. It wasn't encouraging. I noticed that you were in a group of people, and when they started gossiping, you didn't shut it down. I want to talk about that. I would, I would get specific about those things. Be specific. Look what it says here. An honest answer is like a kiss of a friendship. An honest answer is like, answer is like a, a kiss of a friendship. Here's the fifth thing. Be encouraging in your friendships. You know what's easy? Being negative. It'd be easy if I called people up on the platform. It'd be easy for you to spot negative things about them. You know why? Because we're negative people. You can spot the faults in people so fast. It takes time and love to call out encouragement in people. But that's the kind of friendships I want. I want the kind of friendships that value me enough to tell me what's up, but encourage me when they see something that's going right. Just not like, hey, I like your hair. Hey, I like your new outfit. No, no, man, you know what? Man, I love the fact that your relationship with God is so deep. I want that. I love the fact that you're such a hard, diligent worker. How do you have that diligent working spirit? Let me know, because I want that diligent spirit. Be specific with the things that encourage you. Proverbs 17, love prospers when a fault is forgiven, but dwelling on it separates close friends. I want to be encouraging. I want to speak life into people, because I want life spoken into me. Look what Proverbs 11, 9 says, with their wounds, the godless destroy their enemy, but knowledge will rescue the righteous. Okay. Anybody learn anything today? Yeah. We want those good, quality, deep friendships in our life. Allow them to be under construction so that we can be more in tune with the person of God. Let me give you three practical takeaways. Come on, stand to your feet. Three easy Easy to say, harder to do. Three practical steps for your godly friendships. Here's the first one, ready? You need to evaluate the friendships you have right now. If they're not growing you, if they're not developing you, if they're not encouraging you, if they're pulling you down, if they don't understand your faith, if they don't understand the relationship you have with God, it might be time that you think about that might not be a friendship I need. Yeah. I'm, gonna be, I'm under construction, and I understand the people I surround myself with are going to mold me and shape me, so I'm going to be around those people to make sure that they do something good in me. you got to be honest with yourself. you, you got to evaluate those. Here's the second thing. Enrich the relationships you already have. If you're not a communicator, if you're not an encourager, but the people that you're around mean enough to you to do life with them, then speak life into them. Yeah. Encourage them value them. And here's the third thing. Extend grace in those friendships. Do you know why? Because like I said, y'all, we're all weird. We got our stuff. I want my life to be surrounded by people that get me even though they understand oh, I'm in a bad day. They give me grace going, man, Sean wasn't the same day, but you know what? I know he loves me. I know he's good. So I'm going to trust him. I, I, it's all good. Extend the grace to them that you know you want. Evaluate them. Enrich them. Encourage them, but make sure that you're around the right people to make you a better follower of Jesus Christ. At the end of the day, that's what it's all about. See, here's how we're going to close today. Do you know the greatest friend you could ever have is Jesus? Because <laughs> he knows you're crazy and loves you anyway. Man, he left heaven to come to find you. The Bible says, and yet, while you and I were still sinning, while we were crazy, while we were weird, while we were jacked up, he left heaven and came to find us to save us in the midst of our garbage. That's how much he loves you. He doesn't walk out on you. He doesn't talk bad about you. He doesn't slam you. All he does is speak life in you. He loves you. But you have to invite him to be the Lord of your life, your forever friend. He just doesn't beat the door to your heart down to come in. He's a gentleman. He's got to be asked in. If you're joining us online right now. You never said yes to Jesus, but want to give him your life. Just jump in the chat room right now and just say, I need Jesus. I want that forever friend. Our team will connect with you right now. But if you're here today and you've never said yes to Jesus, but want to make him your forever friend, there's a prayer that we pray that gives Jesus complete access to your life. And the Bible says when you invite him in, when you believe in your heart, Romans says, when you believe in your heart and confess with your mouth that he is your Lord and Savior, your forever friend, he comes in and makes everything new. Come on, who doesn't want that today? I do. 
So on the count of three, if you wanna say yes to Jesus and make him the Lord and Savior of your life, I'm gonna ask you to be bold and raise your hand. You might go, what, 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 what? what? We're gonna all celebrate with all heaven when you say yes. Come on. If you wanna say yes to Jesus, raise your hand. One, two, three, yeah, yeah, hand. Oh, come on, yeah, hands, oh, yeah, awesome, awesome, yeah. Awesome, 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 yeah. Awesome. Come on, Edgar, let's celebrate, come on. you're joining us online right now and you want to say yes to Jesus, just jump into that chat room. Our team's there to connect with you. If you raise your hand, we're all going to pray this prayer out loud together. But if you raised your hand, you just say it a little bit louder because today is your day. This is the prayer that changes everything. And after we pray this prayer, we're going to sing loud because we want Jesus to do a work in our lives like we've never seen before. Come on, lift your hands up. Just say, dear Jesus, today I give you my life. I want you to be my forever friend. My heart is wide open. Come live inside of me. Forgive me of my sins. Forgive me of my past and make me brand new. And for the rest of my life, as best as I know how, I will follow you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Come on, Anchor. Lift your hands up.